it's going to be a knitting tutorial though, not a sewing one. I've been learning how to knit for the past few months and it's been a lot of fun creating my own patterns. Every time I share on Instagram that I've made my own pattern, people always ask me how I do it. So I thought I'd make a video showing you the whole process. I thought that for the first project, a boxy cardigan would work well because it doesn't have any shaping like short rows or increases or decreases. So I thought it would be a perfect first project if you want to give it a go. I've also created this file where you can insert all of your measurements, the materials you're using, Using your swatch details and where you can make all of your calculations so I hope this makes the whole process easier and it's also pretty great if you want to recreate this cardigan again you can just grab this file and follow the calculations you've already made to recreate it so I hope it helps and let's get started the first thing you're going to need is the file that I taught you about. You can get it for free on my store, that's linked down below. My store works as a pay what you can type of deal, so if you want to get it for free, just change the price to zero. Or if you'd like to support my work, you can pay wherever you'd like. But no worries if you want to get it for free, just change the price to zero, it's okay. <laughs> then you're going to need measuring tape to take all of the measurements, two different sizes of circular needles, a bigger one for the body and a smaller one for the ribbing, and then you're going to need your yarn and a tapestry needle. The size of the needles and the type of yarn you choose doesn't really matter because you're going to make all of your calculations based on your swatch so it doesn't really matter if your needles are smaller than the ones I used or bigger because that doesn't change your swatch size okay so for example I've already used this method of creating my own pattern as the one on the file to create another cardigan and for this one I use seven millimeter needles for the body and six millimeters for the ribbing and on this cardigan I've used uh, six millimeters for the body and I think it's 5.5 for the ribbing and on this one I did twisted ribbing on this one I did regular ribbing so you can change things up it doesn't really matter it's all dependent on your swatch Okay, so now you're going to take all of our measurements. The measurements you're going to take will be the measurements you'd like your final piece to be. So wear something already oversized and with a drop shoulder so that you can have an idea of how your cardigan will fit at the end. Okay, so for the first measurement you're going to measure the body width, which will be how wide the body of your cardigan is. And for that you're going to measure the distance between the sleeve seams at each side of your sweater or tee. I want mine to be a little less dropped than the ones on my sweater, so I'm going to measure a little bit above. Then for the sleeve length you're going to measure from the sleeve seam until your wrist. Then you're going to measure the armhole size, so keep in mind that this is an oversized fit, your armhole shouldn't end where your armpit is, it should be a little bit lower than that. And then for the length, you're going to measure from your shoulder seam until where you'd like your cardigan to stop. Just keep in mind that this cardigan is knit from the bottom up, so make sure that this is the length you'd like your cardigan to be, okay? Then you're going to measure the neck width, which is the opening of your cardigan and for that you're going to imagine two parallel lines at each side of your neck and measure the distance between those. Now just write down all of your measurements because you're going to reference them later when you're making all of the calculations. If you haven't already, you're going to knit your swatch so that you can figure out how many stitches and rows you have in a 10 by 10 cm square. we have inserted our swatch details, how many stitches and how many rows we have in a 10 by 10 cm square, we'll see how we're going to calculate the measurements we have taken earlier. The principle is we are going to use the rule of 3 to calculate this. Basically we know how many rows we have in a 10 cm distance, so we need to figure out how many rows we need to achieve however many centimeters we have. For example, in the first calculation, we are trying to figure out how many rows the length of our cardigan is and that means that I'm going to use the first formula because this one is for rows, vertical measurements and for that I need to insert the number of rows on my swatch which is 21 equals 10 centimeters and I want to figure out how many rows I have in my case my D measurement is 55 centimeters 
that means that I have to insert 55 centimeters in here and to make this calculation I just have to multiply 21 by 55 and divide it by 10 and this is 115.5 and I'll turn it into 116 rows this means that my cardigan will be 116 rows long then we're going to calculate the C measurement, which will be how long our armhole is. Again, this is a vertical measurement, so we're going to use the first formula. Again, mine is 21 rows are 10 centimeters, and I'm trying to figure out how many rows. Uh, 25 centimeters is, and this equals 53 rows. Then we're going to calculate a measurement and this one is an horizontal measurement and that means that we're going to use the second formula. The second formula is the number of stitches on the swatch, so for me it's 16 equals 10 centimeters and I'm trying to figure out how many stitches there are in, in my case the A measurement is 55 centimeters, so in 55 centimeters and these will be 88 stitches. Now we have to calculate these formulas, which will be a little bit harder to understand, but nothing that you can figure out. I'm going to show you how the cardigan is needed so that you have a better understanding on why we're calculating this. So basically this cardigan is knit from the bottom up and you're going to start with the ribbing, you're going to knit it flat back and forth until you reach the armhole, then you're going to divide your work into three sections, these will be the back and these two will be the front sections. So once you have knit everything, you're going to fold these two towards the center and then you're going to seam these at the shoulders, which will create an opening at the side where you're going to knit your sleeves. So we need to figure out how wide these front sections are. To do this, you're going to get your A measurement, so the back, and you're going to take out your E measurement, which is the opening of your neck, and you have to take out also the ribbing that you're going to add later. So once you have knit the body, your neck opening will look a little bit wider than it will be in the end, because then you're going to add this ribbing section okay so what you're going to do is you will subtract the neck opening and the ribbing from the back section and you're going to divide that by two so that you have the individual measurement for each of these sections okay i hope it's easy to understand so we have to grab the A measurement, which in my case is 55 centimeters. We also have to subtract the E measurement, which is the neck opening, in my case it's 15 centimeters, and you have to take out the ribbing. Here's the thing, I have assumed that you would like your ribbing to be 5 centimeters wide, so you have to take into consideration that you have ribbing on both sides. So for example, my ribbing is 5 centimeters. I have multiplied it by 2 because I have to take it out from both sides so I have turned that into 10 because 5 times 2 is 10 but if you'd like a ribbing to be wider or more narrow you can change this number so imagine that your ribbing will be 6 centimeters you have to multiply it by 2 so it's 6 on this side, 6 on this side so your ribbing is not going to be 10, your ribbing is going to be 12 so you have to change this. Just keep in mind that however wide it is, you have to multiply it by 2 on this calculation, okay? So mine is 10. Minus 10, and you have to divide it all by 2, which in my case it will be 15 centimeters. And then as this is an horizontal measurement, we're going to use this formula, which is for horizontal measurements, we're going to figure out how many stitches. So the number of stitches, which in my case is 16, equals 10 centimeters, and then we need to figure out how many stitches we have in 15 centimeters, and this is 24 stitches. So this means that I'll have to divide my work in 24 stitches, then 88 stitches, and then 24 stitches again. The next measurement we're going to calculate is the distance between the beginning of your work and where you're going to start dividing your work into three, so where your armhole starts. For this one we just need to take the length and subtract the armhole length to figure out this distance. 
So for this one it's pretty easy because we have already calculated both of them. So you just need to subtract this one from this one. So it's 116 rows in my case, minus 53 rows, which will be 63 rows. So I already know that I'll have to knit from the bottom until I reach 63 rows and then I'm going to divide my work into three sections of which I've already calculated how many stitches they will be. Now for the last calculation which will be how many stitches we're going to cast on. So this means that this is how wide your work will be in total. So what we need to do is we have to grab this back section and multiply it by 2 but that means that your work will be fully closed. So we need to take this neck opening and we also have to take the ribbing out because that's something that you're going to add later. And then you will get the whole section. I've just realized that I've made this calculation way harder than it needs to be because you've already done the work here. So what you need to do is add the A measurement and this one times two because it's each one of the sides and you'll get this measurement. So basically what you need to do is the calculation number 3 plus the result of the calculation number 4 times 2 and this is 88 stitches in my case plus 24 stitches times 2 which is 48 and this is 136 stitches. If you would like to calculate it like this either way it's the A measurement times 2 which in my case is 55 times 2 which is 110 minus the E measurement which for me is 15 centimeters minus the 10 centimeters of the ribbing and this is 85 centimeters and as this is an horizontal measurement we're going to use this formula which is the number of stitches on my swatch which is 16 equals 10 centimeters and I want to find out how many stitches I have in 85 centimeters and this is 136 stitches so the result is the same you can calculate it however you'd like so you can sum this with this times 2 or you can use this formula whichever works for you. And now I'm just going to put all of the results in here because it's less confusing than looking at this. So my first measurement it's 116 rows and my last measurement is 136 stitches which is how many stitches we're going to cast on in the next step. Now you have to cast on the number of stitches that you have calculated in the formula number 6. I'm using a cable cast on but you can use whichever method you prefer. I just like how this one looks but it's also more time consuming so if you want to do a long tail cast on feel free to do so. Now you just have to knit your ribbing. I'm knitting one by one ribbing and mine will be 5 centimeters long. Now it's time to start working the body of the cardigan so I'm going to change to a bigger size of needles and I'm going to work stocking it until I reach the number of rows that I've calculated in the fifth formula. Once I reach that number of rows, I'm going to divide my work into three sections, two fronts, which will be at each side of the cardigan, and the middle section, which will be the back, the two sections at each side of the cardigan will be the number of stitches that you have calculated in the formula number 4 and if you have made all of the calculations correctly, the number of stitches in the middle will be the number of stitches that you have calculated in the formula number 3. You're now going to knit each of these three sections separately, so you're going to start with one of the sides and you're going to knit back and forth until you reach the number of rows that you have calculated in the second formula, so the length of your armhole and the number of rows that you will have at the end will be the number of rows that you have calculated in the first formula, which is the number of rows from the beginning of your work until the cast off point. You're going now to do the same for the middle section, you're going to knit until your marker, knit back and forth until you reach the number of rows that you have calculated in your formula number 2.
At this point you're almost done with the body, we're just going to need the last section which will be one of the front sections. And again you're going to do the same, knit until you reach the number of rows that you have calculated. And this is your last section to cast off. If you'd like to make a knitting case for yourself to keep all of your supplies together, you can find the free pattern in my last video. Now grab your tapestry needle because we're going to seam the shoulders together. To seam the shoulders together you're going to fold the two sections at each side of the body, wrong sides facing, and where they meet at the top you're going to seam them together starting at the edge. two shoulders and you have two openings from where you're going to pick up stitches to knit your sleeves. To knit the sleeves you're going to pick in every three stitches you're going to pick two, so you're going to pick two, skip one, pick two and skip one stitch all around the armhole. You just have to keep knitting your sleeve in the round until you reach your desired length. If you'd like to create this puffy effect around the wrist area, you just need to knit two stitches together all around the wrist. So basically you're going to turn the amount of stitches into half and that's going to create a beautiful puffy effect around the wrist. And then you're just going to work your ribbing as normally. Casting off your sleeves you can use whichever method you prefer. I personally really like the Italian bite off when I'm casting off one by one ribbing. At this point you're almost done with your new cardigan, you just need to pick up stitches all around the neckline and knit the ribbing. Just in case you're a beginner, I'm going to link down below a blog post that I wrote a while ago where I've compiled some of my favorite knitting tutorials. And we have finally reached the final step in our tutorial, we just need to block our cardigan. I usually get a few questions about how I block things. I just use cold water, a specific wool detergent, then I soak my piece for around 10 to 15 minutes, after that I just try to take all of the excess water with a towel and then I just pin my project in place in these foamy things that I bought a while ago, then you just need to let it dry for however long it takes which usually is a couple of days. So welcome to the end of the tutorial, I hope you found all of the info useful and I would love to see your version, I'm just here to show you the other cardigan that I've made using this same method. Here's this one, this one is a little bit more cropped, the other one is longer but I'm going to put them side by side so that you can see the difference. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you stick around for the next one. Uh, also just in case you make the cardigan uh, you can use the hashtag myselfdraftedcardigan and you can also use made with cool stitches on Instagram so that I can see your project and I would love to see it. Bye!